we zoom in on and our attention is on that part and we don't really see the rest. We work like a camera lens all the time. <coughs> but when a camera takes a photograph, it's not operating like that. It just goes snap. So while we're looking at this and we're seeing that detail, when you're taking the photograph, the photograph is just taking everything. It's not zoomed in the way we look. So it's a very interesting effect that the way our eyes work, they're fascinating creatures, read up on it. But our eye works like a telephoto lens and that's why our photos are often disappointing to us when we come back. We photograph this gorgeous scene, it's stunning, it's got a poster of the year and you come back and go, hmm. Our eye sees that, but you photograph <coughs> it like that. Until you put the flash on it and then it really stands out. You see, when you're photographing it, I was only seeing this, I wasn't seeing everything behind it. So I'm kind of seeing it like that, but the photograph comes up like that. So when you're in the room, and this is a difficult one when you're trying to sell clients on something, when you're in the room, they will see that, but you're showing them a photograph. And in the photograph, it's really flat. So you've got to complement that with some discussion with some description, if you're sending it on a written document, add some description. Get them to visualize it through your words and your images, okay? And throw a flash on it as well. But again, like when you're actually in that room, I mean, this was again the Plaza Ballroom, as I said, I used to live there. There's the texture drops, without the arc, if, if, you, if you banner in the middle. But when you're actually in that room, these clothes paint, these clothes lines, this Australian theme, obviously, looked really good because they filled up that metal space and they had the little singlets and the board shorts and things like that hung out there. And it really helped theme the room because they were tall. They weren't an uh, you know, a visual problem, but they added impact. But in a photograph, it just doesn't translate as well. And this is where, you know, as event people, you're going to have to start interpreting photographs because clients are going to come to you with photographs and you've got to read the visual clues in that photograph to tell you how big it is, how small it is, what they were using and work out the scale because it can be very deceiving. For instance, this one here, big foyer, I think it's uh, Mazda. Now, what size would you think all those balloons were? Are they all five, six foot balloons? They vary. They do vary. How much by do you think? Are they fairly similar or are they big variations? Big Not variations. by much, no. That's a six foot balloon. That's a three foot balloon. A few feet. Mm. Now, it's very difficult to discern that because you don't quite know where this one is sitting in the room because you've got nothing to reference it for. You have some reference here as to where your height is. And here's a door. You can tell roughly where your height is. Don't be misled by that. That's two floors. So you look at your heights. Use your visual cues around you to give you a sense of what scale of the environment you're working in. So don't just look at this and go, oh, yeah, it's uh, probably six metres. That's actually taller because you've got... Uh, yeah, I think it's about more like eight metres. There's a standard door there. So that will be a standard room height, roughly there. So you've got one, two and a half. So you use your visual meter, meters like that to read your venues, which is this slide here is reading your venues. It's not just reading the size and scale of the venues, but it's also looking for how you can use your venues. Did the previous one make sense to you, by the way, when I was talking about that? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's like using the bits and pieces around it to interpret what you're looking at. <coughs> Feel free, by the way, I don't know if I've made this invitation before, if you've got questions while I'm talking or the points you, you know, go miss. Okay, things to look for, rigging, in-house lighting. Don't mm -hmm. assume it might be set up for an event, so ask. You know, you can walk into a venue and you go, oh, great, look, they've got all these lights up there and they've got this, they've got that. <coughs> but you don't know whether that's been put in especially for an event that's happening the next day or that night or whether that's standard. So ask. 
If it's standard, yay, but get it confirmed. Venue furniture. What have they got available? Can you use it? Is there any? The stage, lecture, uh, dance floor area. What have they got that they bring in-house? Interesting spaces. Think outside the box. Have they got areas inside the building or outside the building that you can utilise for part of your event? And will the theme work in the venue? Like if you've got a client who wants to do a bling bling theme and they want to do, you know, Venetian masquerade, one of my favourites, oh so original but fabulous, just the same. Would you take them to the Stockman's Bar and Grill? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. Good one. You know? No. No. So, you know, if you've already chosen your venue, if you've got a client here we have that wonderful room again. Um, choose, you know, choose a theme that's going to work with your venue. That's a lovely blank space, but as I said before, you're going to have to work around those posts. And we're going to have a look at some of this, but um, we've actually done a bit of this one. Cool. <coughs> we've had a look at that one. And we said before, so there's no rigging. There you go. This is on high. See, this is a low <coughs> lighting, but you can see how they're starting to place things in. They've got a smaller group, so they're keeping them bunched and close to the stage. They've got these coming down, and at night when that's all lit, that'll look fantastic. But your visual cues here is how high is that? We can take it down to the end there and go, well, that's pretty high off the floor. They would probably be about five metres long. Because I know that that ceiling there is six. This is further forward from that, so I can make an assumption that it's probably about that long. Um, just go back again for a minute. Okay, so this photo is taken from the perspective where a guest would be, like standing on the floor and looking across. And this is why I've said, you know, before, it's like, you know, keep things up. Once you've got all these people in that room, you lose a certain amount of the impact of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So keep it up, keep things high. And again, reading your venue, this actually does belong there permanently. You can utilise that all the time. The fairy lights in the ceiling are a permanent feature. So it's an excellent venue to do a starry night theme in there because you've already got one. The Hilton has had these up here for a million years, and now that lighting has changed, they have now built in lights. So this one's done for blue, but they can actually change these sconces up here, and they can be any colour you like. So it's again, it's knowing your venue. Just because you see a photograph of it looking in one colour doesn't mean to say it can't be changed. Ask the questions. You've got lots of good height here, and you can see how high is that? Hmm. There's a stage. There's a lectern. And yet you've got all that space from there. So you can tell that that is probably the six metre ballroom. A lot of them are, by the way. Would you have any, like, to add, like, a nice thing to it and some, you know, dramatic effect, would you hang anything, like, as far as rigging's concerned? Because it looks a little bit, I don't know, I, I feel yeah, like I there's have, something missing. I have rigged in there. The challenge with this room to rig is you have got the ceiling sconces, but they're very old oh. and they're not that strong. Oh. So, um... You can't, you really have to work with these bars through here, and they've got screw points in here, here, and through here. They've got little bolts in the ceiling, but they're painted in black, so you don't really see them until you look from a mechanical perspective. And then you can see where your rigging points can be, but they're limited. And that's when you're working with ceilings and stuff like that, you've got to sort of look at what you can rig and where you can rig it. And FYI, never, ever, ever, ever tie anything to the little smoke detectors is a really bad idea. Don't tell me you've done it. God no. I have seen it done though. I have seen it done. I nearly died but I have seen it done. But yeah that's a way way big no no. Okay. Now theming in this room. You know it looks beautiful. But you've got and, and you've got this level interesting in your ceiling here. You've also got lights up there that you can <coughs> change your colour. Okay, so we've used light 
your uh, get a bit tongue tied here, sorry. Um, utilise the, the spaces and we've chosen a room here that's got lots of interest in the ceiling because we don't have a big budget. We actually have done a nice job with this one, we've got feathers and all sorts of stuff in there. So we spent it on the centrepieces instead. And I've got another shot of that further up which shows you more about the lighting. I love this image. This is a good one for champagne style and going to be a budget. All we've got here is balloons, clear balloons. They look like little bubbles. Don't they look pretty? Yes. And what would that be? Anybody guess? The chains of some sort? Shimmer curtain. Oh. Wow. Shimmer curtain. Good old shimmer curtain. Cheap as chips. Really effective. Light, easy to hang, and really effective. Back to reading venues a little bit. This is a photograph that people have sent me before and it's like, oh, I really love this look. How the hell have they rigged that? You look at it, can you see the rigging? Because you can't rig off the ceiling. This is what I'm saying, interpret your photographs, you can learn from them, you learn to see. But you, if you look, and it's not a brilliant photo, but you can see where they have got those lines, and they've got big ones and little ones on the same line to create that difference. They're not all the same height. By the way, random is really hard to create. You can ask my staff that any time. We did a look all the time that was called Starry Night. We would take the foil balloons, the silver stars, and we would put them at random around the room. And they'd be tying them off to the weights. And next thing you know, they're all in a line. It's like, oh, random. <laughs> and they'd have to go and adjust. You actually have to be a bit deliberate to get random. It's funny how they all end up being about the same. Maybe not exactly, but significantly. Yeah, you've got the wrong person hanging, and if you put me doing it, there wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> okay, let's look at huge space. Huge space. BCEC Hall 1. Now, has anybody ever been to any of the expos or trade shows and things that they have at the convention center? You know how big those halls mm. are? They're huge. So that's a big bear hall. Same room. 12,000 metres, not 1,200, 12,000 metres of ribbon. Where did you tie it? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. How, what did you tie it to? All right. Reading your venue. Look yeah. at all the trust. Yeah. So we've tied it to these points in the truss. And at the bottom? At the top, and then just dropped them and had them sitting in milk crates with bundles. In milk crates with bundles? Well, well no, and this is the setup process. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. setup process. Yeah. So first of all, because I'm doing the, the, the ribbon has got to go to the tables. Okay, you've got one rigging point, you've got your ribbon coming down here, mm. here, and here. But they're all different lengths. That's longer than that is. And that's longer again. So first of all, I had to measure out, mm -hmm. tie them in bundles. I tied them up in bundles to a point in the ceiling, and then they would all drop down. And while they're setting everything else, I'd just put it in a milk crate, so it would be protected while they're setting up the room. And once the room was set up, then we walked around with our mat, and we stapled them, and we went around and stapled those suckers to the little tender bits that we put on tables. Oh, you had them as sort of like... They were centerpiece. They were a centerpiece. So and did they affect people walking? I'm just curious because I'm no. thinking if it's you've got a you know a very tall person who's six foot six. No, because no, you're dealing with fifteen walk, meter ceiling. No, I'm talking about when it comes to the table. The table's about that high. Okay. Like you know what I mean? Ceiling They're walking height. past. If you've got a fifteen meter ceiling. Mm. You've got angles that are like this. Yeah, okay? yeah. Now you take a ceiling that is this high, like only that high, and you're still trying to do those tables. You're going to have angles like that. I guess that'll be shorter, so you'll actually be, walk into it. And then you can walk into it. Oh, yeah. I get you. Because, because of the height. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Tall, so your, I'm thinking, okay, really right. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's really clever. <laughs> it's a great look. Mm. The other thing that's really great about this look, too, is you can still wow. actually see through it. You had in this, you had 130 tables, so you had 1,300 guests, and you had four, dance, uh, four stages around, so they'd have rotating. And what was the event? 
Uh, it was uh, Oracle, I think it was, IT, a while ago. Um, but that. they could yeah. still see straight through it because it's just ribbon. <laughs> ribbon on one side is this wide and on the other side it's as thin as a piece of paper. So it's just ribbon, but the impact in the room, that's why we called it laser ribbon. Rough space is transformed. Again, reading this venues. Very glamorous. What's happening up here though? Again, looking beyond what this is distraction, distraction therapy again. You've distracted them by creating this lovely glamour. They're not going to look up and see the ceiling, but you can. You can look at what's up there and say, okay, that's a rough space that's been transformed. And you can see where your rigging points can be, where you can hang things, and what you can use. So the end event for the client is what you're looking for here. But from our perspective, we need to know what's going on up there. We need to stop tapping the screen. <laughs> we end up with pixels dead. Um, you need to see what's going in behind that you can utilize to hang, support, and create your theme from. And we already saw this one. Good old car park. <coughs> and distraction therapy. I think we've already talked about these. Oh, here we go, centerpieces, heights. Uh, yes, yeah, centerpieces should only be used, not necessarily. Sight lines we've already discussed briefly. You don't necessarily going to be talking to the person at the other end of the table. So sight lines do need to be considered, absolutely. If you're doing a round table, you can use a 50 centimetre tall martini glass and it'll be quite comfortable. But you use that same centerpiece on a rectangular table when people are only this far apart and you've got this big thing in front of you, it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to get picked up and put on the floor. Trust me, guests will do that. So you need to see, you need to choose stuff that's appropriate to where people are going to sit. One rule not to break ever. No living creatures. There was a trend for a while there putting fish in fish bowls and some people still do it. A goldfish can live for 20 years until somebody puts a gin and tonic in his water. Oh. It's cruelty to animals, it's not necessary. Hmm? This is not right. No, it's not right. But they look lovely, you know, the little fighting fish and things like that. They look lovely until some twit gives them a drink. And then they're dead. And they guarantee more. somebody would. Yeah, and like you can inside. guarantee somebody would. Yeah. I did a function once where I actually got that essentially the goldfish is chucked in its throat. So we've talked a little bit about using centerpieces for height, line and form. And they can be quite simple. I mean these ones are actually done on a floral base, which requires a bit more skill. But you can easily use these in a gel vase. Just use a vase with the floral gel and, and then you can control your positioning. You can't just stick it in a straight vase because they'll sort of go Pff. So you need to put some gel in so you've got some control over how you place them. Oh, hang on, I've gone backwards. Tall styles. Again, we've got the um, the reds and the silvers going in. Gold, is it gold? Yeah, gold. So we've got the three, the, the two metals going, and the um, a double sash, and you've got height and fairy lights going on through there. And here we've changed the look by adding cobwebs. So you completely change the feel by changing some of the elements you've incorporated in it, but you're still using the basic same structure. And here we've combined the big balloons and the centerpieces and we've created Night of a Thousand Moons. Isn't that a lovely title for Night of a Thousand Moons? Doesn't that invoke romantic images of under the starry skies? You know? And it's again your weather balloons. Now I love working with these weather balloons because they're white. They're big and they love light. So you can go out there and if you've got a lighting budget, you can take your lights and you can aim them directly at those balloons and you can change the colours. The next thing you've got Mars, you can put pattern gobos on them and you've got Saturn, you've got planets going on up there. It could look really, really cool. So this one is all the balloons are hung from the ceiling because you've got ceiling height here. You've got plenty of rigging, you've got massive heights. You can take your eight foot balloons. I mean, these balloons are literally this tall that are hanging up here. Now you can take those and you can use those in that room really effectively and work with those middle spaces. 
again, proportion, scale. But here we have a room that doesn't have that height. So we've still created a very similar theme. It's not quite as random because we have to work off the table, so there's a bit more line, linear. We've created a bit of the random by going with different heights, but these are a much smaller balloon, they're only this big. And again, instead of anchoring it from the ceiling, we're taking it from the floor. Because you've had to. They actually have got rigging in the ceiling, you could, but it wasn't usable. So props and materials. Shimmer curtain. Cheap, cheerful, super effective. Double-sided tape and some shimmer curtain and go, girl. Throw a light up it. Here we've got Priscilla. We've got the high heel platform shoes on a light box. I can't really see those, unfortunately. They're, it's not, I should have put in another photo. Um, but they were hysterical to make. They were actually real shoes that I picked up in the sale. And I got vinyl and created a platform on them that was like about that high and stuff them on a light box. Again, lots of fun in Aladdin's cave making things. We used to call it the sheltered workshop. I spoke earlier about the James Bond cutouts. We begin, put them on a riser, throw a light behind. This is an oil wheel, by the way, lighting-wise. They are out there. They're not that easy to find anymore. They're not that popular anymore. But for a James Bond, if you can find a supplier that has the oil wheels, they're great. It's like a lava lamp on a wall. They've got this oil thing, and when it warms up, they move. So it is like a lava lamp sort of effect. And when we see the old James Bond films, you mm -hmm. remember the, the, the opening scenes? Yeah, that lava lamp sort of a look with all the, the shadows going across it. Well, it gives that sort of combination. So it's a really good, good light to use for that particular theme. Shimmer curtain. Disco balls. Cheap, cheerful, but a lot of fun. And I spoke earlier about these the big air, air what's it that you can buy. Now these all have to be rigged from the ceiling. They're heavy. They need a fan. They need an electricity. A fan? A fan. They're inflatable. What, the fan running the whole time? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. You turn that fan off in the room. Hmm. So you turn it off at night, and you, the next morning they go back up again. But you know, they need a fan, they, so they need power, they need light. So they're expensive, they're fantastic. Mm. If you've got the budget, go for it, they're awesome. Do they come in different other, in other um, yes. shapes? Yes, they do. They're lovely. They come from yeah. America. They're um, air, air benders? I can't remember quite what the name is. But then you've got a similar look, created with a good old weather balloon. No electricity required. No fan required, you've already inflated up with, an air, with a, uh, a balloon inflator, which by the way, you can use a vacuum cleaner. But you have actually got, in the industry as you can imagine, they've got proper inflating equipment. Some of it's really nifty and some of it's computerised even, so that you can actually have these little, yeah, no, they're called dual inflators they call them. They're a little box, the two nozzles, and you can set how much they get, and you stick your balloon on and they size them and blow them up and you go, Poof. and you, yeah, they're fabulous. And again, I love these. I love them. I'm just going to keep showing them. And we've done Guess the Theme. This is, oh, now here's a good one though. Guess the Theme on this one. You come up some real rippers. Your clients will come up some real rippers. client came to me and she wanted, for her theme, for her event, a soft forest. What the heck is a soft forest? I said exactly the same thing, slightly more colourfully. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just thinking when you're saying that. What is, what is a soft forest? What's a hard forest then? She wanted a soft forest. So the trick here is though, is when you've got a client coming to you with something like that, you have to ask them, what does that mean to you? What is it they're looking for? We can assume this from the name, but we really need to question the client and find out when they say, I want a soft forest, what are they imagining? What are they seeing in their mind's eye? And you've got to do that even if they come up with a Venetian masquerade. What do they mean when they see? What do they see? Ask them the 20 questions. Ask them the why, what's, where's, you know? 
What we did for this one though, to give her the soft forest, because she wanted it to smell and look and feel a bit like a forest, obviously. So we, we had a limited budget, we did what we could. This is a while ago, so in those days our vases were limited. We had spaghetti vases were all like a get. So we used spaghetti vases to get that upright. We had the willow, we wound it with ivy and we put moss and fill flowers around the base. And then because we were really lucky, it was in season, we used the chair and we hung peppercorn. Mm. We hung peppercorn on the back of all the chair covers. That would, that would give that smell. Absolutely right. So when you walked in that room, it smelt green. It smelt spicy, but it smelt green. Because you use peppercorn. Mm. As if you're in a forest with yeah. what? And I do the same thing when I'm doing some of the Moroccan themes and some of the uh, you know exotic themes. Yeah. When I'm doing my centerpieces and my runners and things like that, I will throw out there, I will throw out the star anise. Star anise is a really strong, spicy smell. I'll throw down cinnamon quills as well because of the look, and cloves because they also smell. But you throw down the, the cinnamon quills don't smell, but they they look nice. But your your clove and your star anise have this lovely sm spicy smell in the room, so you're adding an extra sense to your event. So now you've dealt with visual, you've got your lighting going on. And now you're incorporating your nose as part of the story. Your ears are going because, of course, you would have had music. So now you're incorporating your senses, eyes, your yeah. ears, and your nose. <laughs> you can do the same thing with your flowers. You do need to be careful with flowers, though. Um, lilies smell fantastic. But if you're going to use a lot of them, don't do it in a small space because it's going to be overwhelming. Lilies on mass in a large space is fantastic. It smells nice, looks great. You know, not everybody likes it, but it's a strong smell. You've just got to be aware that it's not too strong. Okay? Don't tend to go for um, uh, incense and things like that because not everybody likes incense and it can actually have a negative effect rather than a positive effect. Okay? But be aware also of what your venue smells like when you go there. That's why when you sell a house, what's the first thing they tell you to do? Put on a pot of coffee because it smells nice. You know, they imagine themselves there having a coffee in the morning. Okay, so we've looked at some of these already. This is different perspectives. Um, here we go. Let's go and move on to lighting. Lighting. This is Light Space in the Valley. Another lovely venue. I really like this venue. It's very versatile. It's a medium. It's kind of like a chic rough space. Like it's a rough space in a sense. It's beams and it's exposed, but it's well finished. Okay. And then we go in and we add our lighting and we transform it. Here we go. Balloons, shimmer curtain, furniture, lighting. <laughs> Talking of lighting, we have lighting here today. This, my friends, is a parkan. Okay. This is an LED parkan. The LED park cans are fantastic. They're a lovely new, um, new addition to the rain. Well, not that new anymore. They've been around for a while now. But the LEDs are particularly good because they're not hot. You can touch them. You can move them at any time. This has been on for hours and it's not hot. The old park cans, you'd be burning your fingers by now. They were hot. They throw light further, so if you've got a bigger distance, the old ones are better to go for. But these are fantastic. You can also, because they draw very little out power, you can actually run quite a lot of <coughs> these off a circuit without it pop by on the circuits. Okay? So you don't have the heat, you don't have the power draw. And you have control. There's little panels underneath here. You can change your mode. So you can change one park and you put it all sorts of different settings. And this is just using it manually alone. So when you actually put it, wire it up with the desk and control desk, you can do lots and lots of different things. So go back. But these things are fantastic. They really are. You can use them to light everything and anything. 